Hey guys, so today we are going to do this chapter 10 from class 5 EVS Walls Tell Story. So this is a chapter based upon an example that is, they have given us an example of Golconda Fort located in Hyderabad. So let's start reading. This first thing, let me say you all, this chapter is based upon a dialogue. It means dialogues have been given of children which explains as the importance of Golconda Fort or architecture. So let's get started. Reached Golconda. I'm gonna read it. <clears throat> At last we reached Golconda. We were glad that Didi was with us. Didi studies history and we were, we enjoy visiting different places with her. Shailaja. My goodness, this fort is so huge. Sridhar. And see at what a height it is built. Kalyani, just look. Have you ever seen such a huge gate? Shailaja, it must be very heavy. I wonder how many people would be needed to open and close this gate. Okay, so in the first paragraph here given, the children have been exclaimed, you know, are surprised to see such a big fort, which is on such a great height and has such big, big gates. So let's go on. So first thing we learned from, you know, I uh, got to know from here is these are children who are traveling with Didi and Didi knows about history. Next, Kalyani. Look at these sharp iron spokes. I wonder why they were made. Okay, so they have seen the wall and they have seen some sharp iron spokes. These are the sharp iron spokes on the uh, gates. Shalija. Look at these thick walls too. So they are seeing the outer walls of the fort. These. And they are like, look, they are so thick. Thick. Sorry. Shida, I have never seen such thick walls. Kalyani. At some places, a part of the wall comes out in a round shape. I wonder why. Okay, so the Kalyani have seen a wall. That is this picture given here. In which, this is the wall. And there is an outer thing coming out and Kanyani is what is this why is it coming out so Didi says these are called bastions so it's an important word bastions known as burj see these are even higher than the wall the outer wall of this fort has 87 bastions so Didi is explaining that these are bastions this is a baston and the outer walls of the Golconda fort has 87 bastions. Thick walls, a huge gate and so many bastions. So many ways to ensure security. So she's saying that this, uh, this fort has thick walls, a huge gate and so many bastions to ensure security. So Golconda fort has many ways to ensure security. It has also been given. So these are uh, questions which can, you can do on your own on the understanding of my video. Let's continue. What did we find inside the fort? So the children are inside the fort now and they are saying, Charlie I wonder how old this fort would be. Do you think the king built the fort so that he could live here? So she's asking, how old this fort is? Did the king build to live here? Kalyani. It was written outside the that. Kuli Kutub Shah Sultan's rule here, one after another, from 1518 to 1687. So the child Kalyani here has read out that Kuli Kutub Shah Sultan's rule here. Didi, much before that, in 1200, 1, this fort was made up of mud and different rulers lived here. Shailaja, oh look, this board has a map of the fort. Sridhar. This map shows so many gardens, fields and factories. See, there are many palaces also inside the fort. Shalija. That means not only the Sultan but many other people like farmers and workers must also have been living here. Kalyani. It must have been a complete town. So, they are discussing here and they uh, get to know that it was a complete town by their own discussion. The Sultan's palace. Shrida. These steps seem to go on and on. So they are seeing the steps and they are so big. Shailaja. Even in those days they used to have two, uh, they used to have buildings with two floors. So Shailaja is exclaimed, she thought that the uh, buildings would be only of one floor. Then she's like, no, there were buildings of two floors. Kalyani. 
Now the building is ruined, but no one can imagine that earlier there were so many big halls and rooms here. Sridhar, look at this beautiful carving it on the walls. It is so fine. Kalyani, we also saw something like a fountain on one of the roofs. Didi, yes. There were many big tanks and fountains here. They used to be full of water. So we have a, a box given here, uh, which explains the importance of a fountain on the roof. Next, this is thing to do. You all think and discuss. Let's move on. This is an important box for every child in fifth grade reading. Where is east and west? They asking you. Do you know about east, west, north, south? Uh, before reading only I would explain it so just pay attention on this box drawn here so imagine you're standing here the circle here is you so this place is your one second let me just draw yeah so this is your east your right is always your east, this is your west, this is your north, and this is your south. <clears throat> so the thing forward to you is north always, right is east, left is west, and back is south. Okay? This, let me read it once for you all. At the place you are, where does the sun rise, where does it set, where are you standing, find out what all is there to your east. What all is there to your west? And also find out what places are to your north and south. So they have just said you have to find out where is west, north, east, south. So this is once more your reading thing. Which you should do on your own. Let's continue. So here comes the map. It's so interesting, right? The map of the Kolkanda fort located in the Hyderabad. So they have given us a key of the map, which is not so clear in the PDF. But yeah. So here we go. So first thing I can be visible here is the darwaza for me. Darwaza here. So let's find how many darwazas are there in the map. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, and a 9. So we have 9 darwazas on the outer thing of the fort. 9. And that's huge. That's really good. Next thing we find is stone. Okay, this one. Stone for gun, some powder. Okay, it's just a factory. Let's count them also. 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 5. So they have 5 factories in the fort. That's also a big number. You see a symbol of three greens that is a bag. B A G H. So there were bags in the palace. The bags were located in the palace only, which are difficult to find here. Next thing we find is a palace. So in the palace, uh, in the fort also, there were not only one palace, but there were many palaces. I'll show you all. See, one, two, three. Three in a four. I'm sorry, five. And yeah, so we have five palaces. Oh, that's a huge number. And palaces are not something small buildings. They are very very huge things. And see, they are named Shah Mughal, Bala Hilal, and many more. And then road. So at that time also road was there, obviously to move from one place to another. So this is the road. Yeah. This. Let me draw arrows. See? So the map looks so destructive now because we have drawn so many things. Let's move on. Why these attacks? Now the story goes on. These children are seeing something and discussing. While we all were talking, Sridhar called us to see a big gun. So he spotted a big gun. And that was a cannon. Let me just underline it. Cannon. We ran up to the steps. Shailaja, this must have been the Sultan's big gun. Didi, 
This was used by Aurangzeb. His full army came with their guns and cannons to attack, but they could not even enter the fort. For eight months, they camped outside the fort. So let me explain it. The children uh, spotted a big gun, that is this cannon. And they were like, this may be the Sultan's big uh, gun. So Didi was like, nahi. This was the orange big gun. And he came to attack the fort. But he wasn't able to enter the fort also. For eight months, he had to camp outside the fort. Okay, clear. Next. Shailiza. Why would the army come here all the way from Delhi? <clears throat> so Shailiza is thinking, why did the people come from Delhi to here? Is orange mad? Why did he travel so much? Didi. In those days, emperors and kings played such tricks. They tried to make smaller kingdoms a part of their own kingdom. This was done sometimes by friendship, sometimes by flattery or even by marriage between families. And when nothing else worked, they also attacked them. So Shailaja asked, Didi, Didi, why did they do it? Why did he come from Delhi to Hyderabad only for uh, attacking? So Didi was like, they do it for adding a fort to the kingdom. Okay, clear. Next, Kalyani. Why is it that Aurangzeb's army could not get into the fort? He had so many soldiers and big guns. Shailaja, did didn't you see these strong thick walls in the map? There is long deep ditch pit pit along the wall. How could the army enter? So Shailaja Shailaja is saying see there are so many thick walls, big walls. And so many bastions. How could they enter, man? Shridhar. If the army tried to come from different sides, then the soldiers in the bastions would have seen it from a long distance. So now you get why uh, holes were made in bastions. Where are bastions here? Yeah. So, hole. The hole in the bastion was made for the soldier to sit and see distance. A long distance. Kalyani. Imagine the army is coming on horses and elephants with all their guns. Here, the Sultan's army stands full prepared. Chalija. Oh no, how many people and soldiers on both the sides have been killed in all this fighting? Why do people attack and have wars? So now Chalija is like, oh man, so many people are being killed. Why are they fighting? So Sridhar. Guns and cannons are things of the past now. These days, many countries have nuclear bombs. A single bomb can cause so much destruction. So, Sridhar is clearing that there was all old things. Now, we have uh, nuclear bombs. So, this is this page. I'm sorry. This page is already discussed. Think and find out. When there was no telephone. So, this shows when there was no telephone. Didi asked us to wait at the king's palace. She herself went to Fateh Darwaza. A while later, we heard Didi's voice. Alert! I am Sultan Abul Hassan. I am very fond of music and Kuchipuri dance. We all laughed. We were surprised how Didi's voice could be heard from so far. She later told us that if we stand at Fateh Darwaza, whatever you speak can be heard at the king's palace. Okay. So this this is they're just explaining ki there's a Fateh Darwaza in Golconda Fort. I'm saying from my own experience. In which you stand and say something, your voice echoes and it goes till the king's palace. So let me explain to you in the short thing because I have visited Golconda Fort. So imagine this is the fort, a clear space. And here is the Fateh Darwaza and here is the king's palace. So if you stand in the middle and say something, your voice echoes from the four sides and it reaches to the king's palace. So that's what they're saying here. So children, that's all for this video. This the eighth page of this chapter will be done in the next video. Stay tuned. The second part will be surely published. Thank you.